My name is Jose Mariscal, and I'm the project manager for the ICP's Leading by Legacy project. The webinar being provided today is part of a running series in conjunction with the ICP's Leading by Legacy project and is funded by the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Joining me today are Legacy Project Assistant Brandon Battle, ISP Center for Social Media Coordinator Ben Gorbin, and our guest panel, Luis Soler. Uh, before we start, there are a few things about the GoToWebinar service that we want to make you aware of. First, to listen to the webinar, you have the option to log in and listen through your speakers or via phone by calling the number provided on your control panel. The control panel should appear in the top right corner of your screen after you've logged in. If you're having any difficulty using the GoToWebinar system, please uh, call ICP staff at the number provided on the slide and you'll reach Brandon Battle. Um, and he'll help you walk you th through the steps to make sure that you're following and listening correctly. Also, be aware that after a few moments, your control panel will minimize itself. So if you have any uh, questions, and we'll go over questions here in just a minute, you'll need to find the GoToWebinar icon on your toolbar and click it once to, re to reopen your control panel. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we will be taking live questions from the audience. You can ask a question by clicking on the hand icon and control panel on the right. We will then call on you and unmute you so that you can directly ask the panelist a question. However, I'm going to ask that if, if you could try and submit your questions by typing it into the question box located at the bottom of the control panel. This sort of gets rid of the background noises in, just in case we have too many phone lines open. Uh, at the end of the webinar, oh, I'm sorry. And at this time, I'm going to give the control over to our chief panelist here, Luis Soler, and allow him to introduce himself. I'm Luis uh, Soler. I'll be your panelist for today's webinar. And uh, just a little background on me. Uh, I'm currently the chief of police for the city of Crowley, Texas. Uh, Crowley, Texas is a suburb of uh, Fort Worth. Uh, we're a small agency. We are about 32 full-time sworn officers plus civilian personnel. And uh, we serve a population of about uh, 15,000 people. So, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some strategies on developing your uh, social media. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to present it from the small agency perspective, if you will. I will share some examples of what we've done in, in Crowley, uh, what has worked for us, what has not worked for us, et cetera. And hopefully, it will give you um, a better understanding of this uh, phenomenon, if you will, this hot topic, which, which is social media. And we see this uh, every single day in becoming more and more prevalent out there and affecting you know, police work uh, as a whole. But before uh, we we get going here, um, I want to touch on a couple of key points. Uh, first of all, uh, why are we here? Well, we need to understand that social media is a powerful and far-reaching thing. Um, when I teach with uh, Leading by Legacy uh, for IACP, uh, we usually encounter um, a lot of people asking about social media and how it impacts the profession and, and what can we do to, to have a social media strategy, if you will. Uh, the second thing is we need to understand that there is public expectation out there that the police agencies use social media. And we'll share some numbers on uh, some research the IACP did later on in this webinar. But this presumption is not completely correct. Um, there are still police agencies out there that, or law enforcement agencies out there that do not use social media. And there's, there might be reasons for that. And some of you might be attending this webinar may have some of those reasons, uh, some of those fears, if you will, uh, and hopefully we'll address those so, so we can help you um, establish a better social media uh, program or just start a fresh social media program. Uh, also, police leaders uh, must understand social media and in order to develop policies and strategies. And I, I find that many leaders are confused about how social media works. 
And when we don't understand things or when we're afraid of things, or we, we, we tend not to do a lot about them or we try not to adopt them. Um, so hopefully after you go through this webinar, we'll be able to have a little bit more, better understanding of social media and how it works. And you'll be, be probably able to, to develop your, your strategy or your program, if you will. Uh, finally, uh, two things is agencies should develop uh, effective social media policies that balance organizational needs and free speech. speech. And we'll once again discuss this later on, but you need to understand uh, as an organization, you do have the right to regulate certain things in your uh, social media, but your employees as, as citizens of this country may have some uh, certain rights uh, regarding free speech and, and we'll touch on that a little bit um, later on. And finally, I don't know if you can see the last uh, sentence there very well, but uh, ACP has done, like I said, a lot of research and they have recommended key strategies in order to implement or develop a social media uh, program and we're going to discuss those in this webinar as well. And I, I don't have control of this uh, anymore. All right, we're... Jose, if you're there, I can't move this one. Yeah, we're uh, trying to work on giving you control back again here. Bear with us for a second. Now uh, you should try, try it there. There you go. There we go. Thanks. Uh, so I did mention the key, key strategy considerations that IACP uh, came up with and the source of this, once again, I don't know what's wrong with the slides, you can't really see the last portion of it, but the source is the IACP Center for Social Media and at the end of this webinar, uh, we'll have a representative from IACP that works that area um, talk about a little bit about the, the social media uh, program. So. In its research, uh, ICP came up with uh, some key strategy considerations. And I'm going to enumerate them. I'm going to explain them briefly because these are the things you have to be aware of if and when you decide to either start a brand new um, social media program or maybe make yours better. The first consideration you need to have in mind is research. And what, our, what this means is that you need to research uh, practices and social media use in law enforcement uh, that can be helpful in providing you with an insight and direction concerning your own strategy. Um, the second strategy is management. Here, what this means is you need to determine who in your organization will manage your social media presence. Plain and simple, who's going to be in charge of this? Um, you need to keep in mind, though, that uh, that usually social media modes of communication are best placed in the hands of those that are familiar with communication and outreach strategies, i.e. that could be uh, someone that works in your IT department or could be someone that works as your PIO or press information officers. Um, these people are usually a little bit more savvy when it comes to social media uh, and media relations period. So uh, that's something to consider when you decide who is going to manage uh, your social media uh, program. The next consideration is a big one, and I think that's one of the ones that probably you know prevents a lot of people from from going forward with this, and that's fear. And we all know uh, fear when we don't when we don't know about something, or we're not educated about something, or we fear something, we are very resistant to it. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there have some fears about social media, and we've seen horror stories about social media and how can it you know destroy you basically if you don't know how to properly use it. And actually, I have an example of a recent event here in Texas, and I can share that with you later on. Um, but yes, just like everything else, there, there's success stories and there are horror stories. But you shouldn't let those fears uh, prevent you from from uh, developing your, your your strategy. The next thing you need to consider is goals. Uh, you need to have diverse goals. Um, what are your goals when you start this program? Is it strictly uh, putting out numbers uh, like crime statistics or is it 
strictly for uh, good PR, if you will, or community outreach, or is your goal to do both, or is your goal to do something else? So you need to determine your goals, and, and based on those goals, then you need to model your, your your social media strategy, if you will. The next thing you need to consider is your audience. You need to ident identify your audience and and well as potential audiences. And later on, I'll discuss what happened here in Crowley and how uh, the, the the audience is, is it's a very it's a very specific audience and how we figure that out. But um, always bear in mind, you will have a an audience, and then because of the nature of these social media networking sites, you may have unintended audiences. Namely, when people share things on Facebook or they forward them, for example, they might not even be in your state. They might not be in your community, but now they became your audience uh, for your department. The next thing you need to consider is content. And basically, content, Clues, uh, what you want to share, what do you want to put on your social media platforms? Is it, like I said, is it news, event information, disaster, preparedness tips, uh, alerts? What is it? What is it? That's kind of like goes hand in hand, hand with your goals, the goals that you have determined that you want to reach. Uh, the next thing you need to uh, bear in mind is the level of engagement, engagement, and your goals will help you basically determine. The degree of interaction that you want to have with your community um, is that, like I said, if you're really going out for public relations or really going for community outreach, then your level of engagement should be pretty high. If you're just putting it out there, if you're just putting out numbers and statistics and and crime stats or things like that, then your level of engagement, conversely, will not be that high. The next consideration is platforms, and when we talk about platforms. In layman's words, is like what social media you want to use. Uh, there are a lot of platforms out there. Uh, not all of them will suit your needs. Just because the neighboring agency is using X platform doesn't really mean that your agency will do good at it either. Uh, either. So, so once again, you need to consider which platform or platforms, if you want to use multiple, um, you want to uh, adopt. The next thing uh, is integration. And when we talk about integration, uh, we, we're saying that do not solely rely on social media to enhance your communication and outreach initiatives. Social media is, once again, just another tool in your toolbox for that community outreach, if you will. Do not uh, rely solely on this because that's, that's not the way it's, it's meant to be. Uh, always follow up. Um, just like everything else we do, just like we do after action reports, et cetera, we need to figure out, is this working for us? Uh, is this strategy working for us? And what about our community? What, what is our community doing? What do they think about our, our social media strategy? So those things you always have to go back and, and, and review what you're doing so you can refocus uh, your efforts when you're um, developing your strategy or running your program. And the last thing I think is very, very crucial is the policy development. I cannot stress this enough. You must have a policy. It will protect you from liability. It will allow you to, to set the rules, if you will, the rules of engagement, with, both with the community and with your uh, users uh, and your organization. My advice to you all is if you not have a policy, do not go forward with this because you can find yourself in hot water. That's my personal experience. Um, so what I want to do right now is try to like bring this home with certain examples of how the city of Crowley here, the Crowley Police Department, has uh, tackled, if you will, some of these uh, key considerations. Mind you, I'm not going to talk about all of them. Uh, I'm going to talk about the ones that I think are, to us, once again, the most relevant ones. doesn't mean that the other ones are not relevant. It doesn't mean your organization, they're not going to be irrelevant either. But um, I, I just want to touch on those that we, you know, we, we have uh, used or uh, spent most time on, if you will. The first one is research. And basically, I think everybody needs to do this. Uh, I think you don't want to go in blindly into this uh, new uh, arena, if you will, or without doing your research. So. Having said that, what I want to do first is define social media. 
And once again, this is the definition that uh, IACP Center for Social Media has, has given us. So social media is defined as a category of internet-based resources that integrate user-generated content and user participation. This includes, but is not limited to, social networking sites such as Facebook, MySpace, that's now defunct, I believe. I, I don't think anybody uses that anymore, but that was a precursor uh, to Facebook. Uh, Microblogging sites such as Twitter, photo and video sharing sites such as Flickr and YouTube, and wikis uh, such as Wikipedia, blog and news sites such as such as Dig and Reddit. And if you see the little uh, picture there, there are a lot, a lot of platforms, and it seems like every day you look there's some new uh, platform coming online, and and this is important because you want to stay uh, abreast of all these new platforms because, like I said, when you reevaluate re your platforms, you may find that you may need to go to something different because you're not catching the most uh, uh, audience, if you will, with, with your current uh, platform. So, which are the top social media sites? Uh, well, as of September of this year, both Facebook and YouTube uh, were the leading um, social media sites with these are number of monthly visitors and these are astronomical numbers uh, 900 uh, million users uh, or visits in a month Twitter about 310 LinkedIn which is the uh, uh, professional uh, business related which you, which you can put kind of like your resume online etc that's about 255 million once again Pinterest 250 Google Plus 120 Tumblr. Tumblr is basically a photo sharing uh, platform. That's 110, and so is Instagram, which is about 100. Um, so as you can see, Facebook is by far the world's most uh, used social media platform. Uh, YouTube. YouTube is sometimes not considered true social media. Uh, it does have social media features, but YouTube's function is. Uh, it's mainly to be an user-generated content hub, like an archive, if you will. So there's some you know, varying opinions, if you will, on whether YouTube is a true social networking site. But regardless, it's up there with Facebook. So, and we all know how you know things get posted on YouTube and they go viral, and and that's why because it's it's everywhere. So now let's talk about a little bit about the actual power of social media and why this is so important and so far reaching. Uh, well, some interesting statistics. Uh, adults spend over 15 hours a week on the internet. Um, this means they spend a considerable amount of time each day, each month, and each year on the internet, especially on social media sites. Uh, and we, as law enforcement agencies, should capitalize on this and basically get into the social media business because we do have an audience. There are about two new Twitter accounts that are activated every second. Uh, the average viewer spends about 12.2 hours a month watching online videos. And we're talking, here we go, the YouTube uh, thing. Um, YouTube is the second most popular, popular search engine, only surpassed by Google. Why is this important? Because if someone's going to Google your agency, most likely, not, or they're going to search for your agency on the internet, they're going to search Google, but they're also going to search YouTube. And I encourage everybody to do their own search on YouTube about your agency, see what you, you find. And you may be surprised, there might be videos out there about your agency and YouTube that you're not even aware of. So what this all means, well basically this all means that all these people are getting their information from the social media. So shouldn't we, once again, put our information out there on social media as well. Uh, once again, Facebook is perhaps the most powerful platform. Uh, and not having a Facebook page at this point really, I believe, my opinion, puts you in a disadvantage. Uh, studies have been done regarding per, uh, private businesses and those that do not have a Facebook page don't do as well uh, financially, if you will, uh, that those that do. Um, Twitter, Twitter is very popular information for like real-time sharing. This is when, when people will tweet, you know, I'm doing this or this is going on right now. Um, you should consider a Twitter account, um, and I'm going to talk about an experience with Twitter that we, that we have and how we're going to fix that. Um, 
But once again, Twitter is, is just for real-time information, if you will. Talking about Facebook, once again, it has over 350 million active users globally, and 50% of them log on every day. And the average Facebook user spends about 55 minutes per day on the site. And like I said, 83% of companies have a Facebook page, private companies, and that's because it's no secret it really makes a difference to them uh, economically, if you will, financially. Now, these numbers are staggering, and now I hope you realize the importance of social media and how far-reaching it is and how many people are actually connected to social media uh, on a daily basis throughout the whole world. How about us? How about social media and police? Well, <clears throat> uh, IACP Center for Social Media, did they have done a couple of surveys, I believe 2011 or 2012 was the first one, 2014 being the last one. Um, they surveyed about 728 law enforcement agencies. And this is what the survey uh, revealed. 95% uh, of the surveyed agencies stated that they, they did use social media. About 82% they used social media for criminal investigations. About 71, 72% of agencies had a social media policy, which is great, but I will rather see that at 100%. Uh, about 78, 79% of agencies reported social media has helped them solve crimes, and trust me, it has helped us here in Crowley. Uh, about 77%, uh, they stated that it has improved police community relations. I don't have hard numbers on this, but I can tell you that ever since we launched our social media presence, the, uh, the feedback we've gotten from the community has been positive, and I think it has really helped our relations. Uh, and once again, this, those are the numbers on the, on the platforms that are being used, Facebook being the number one platform. Um, interestingly enough, about half of the agencies that are not using social media are considering it. Uh, and then this is a list of some case studies that ICP did. And if you go to that website there and all this can be provided to you later on. You can actually read these these case studies. They're they're pretty some some of them are pretty extensive, but it's very interesting to see how social media um, made a difference in, in their policing, etc. Let's talk about management. And and once again, it's who goes, who's going to manage your your social media. Well, basically, there are certain things you need to bear in mind. You have to have dedicated people. Uh, you need to check your social media. My recommendation is at least twice a day maybe in the morning and the afternoon. Uh, to be relevant and current, please post at least one per day, if, if, if you can, obviously. Uh, never ever argue online. I, I've seen some um, agencies, case in point, one in Texas recently this last week, they actually went on their Facebook page and they actually argued with a news channel and it went so bad that they had to shut down their social media uh, or website, their Facebook, because it backfired on them. Social media is not there to argue with people online. Uh, and please always reply to questions or concerns uh, promptly. Good customer service. Once again, um, this is to help you. It's not to you know, destroy you. And you need to make sure that you do um, use it the right way. Uh, once again, if someone puts something negative in your website, something someone has a concern, the best way to do it is send a message back. Please, uh, please you know, get with our, you know, professional standards unit or call such and such, we'll be happy to take your your your, your complaint. But never and never and ever engage them in a an open form uh, negative tip for that, if you will. So what about fears? Uh, we found that uh, the main fears are affecting, that put a barrier, if you will, to, to developing your social media are, are time, manpower or money. Uh, some people don't know what to post. Um, some people don't know what their citizens want from the social media. Uh, some do not think their boss would approve of the social media. Uh, and this is a big one, it's change. And like we all know, police uh, are very resistant to change. So it, it's sometimes a little harder to sell this to, especially what we call the old timers that do not believe in all this technology and all this social media, it's, it's harder for them to, to, to accept it. And then of course, some of us may have little or no knowledge of social media. I'll be honest with you, I'm not an IT expert. 
I'm not a big uh, social media person, but I, I've done enough research to feel comfortable about it that then I started the program here. Before that, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I was a little hesitant because I didn't know I, I was going to work out. So real quick, uh, to the time, manpower, and money solu uh, problem, um, some possible solutions are basically you need to designate someone. Uh, you may not be hire, uh, able to hire someone full time, but maybe you can have someone that does it part time. If you have the money, you may outsource some social media freelancer or a consultant and, and they can do that for you. That's if you don't have enough staff on, on hand to do this. Uh, now, when I, whomever you designate, make sure they're in there for the long run. Because what you don't want to do is train people on all this, and then six months down the road they either move on or, or they retire or they or they quit to go somewhere else or or they decide they don't want to do it. Now you find yourself you know behind a power curve because now you have to uh, train people on this. Um, about the time, dedicate a solid hour a day on your social media. And I know we're all busy, and if it's you that has to do it. Integrate it when you when you check your emails in the morning, if you will. Check your check your check your uh, web page, if you will. Um, but at least try to dedicate one hour, if not a half hour, if you will, uh, to your social media. Because once again, if you don't dedicate time at all, you you'll become irrelevant. So what about goals? So when we identify some, our goals. Uh, these were our goals for Crowley PD. And once again, these can be your goals or your goals may be different. The first one was to decrease uh, complaints and increase uh, citizen satisfaction by better interaction and communication with our citizens. And like I said before, we have noticed a positive um, interaction with the community. We get a lot of good posts. Sometimes we get negative posts and the, the people themselves, the community members, they actually take care of that by chastising these posters, if you will, when they're wrong. And it's a good feeling when you have your own community, you know, trying to like police the website, if you will, because they believe it's a, it's a good thing. Um, our second goal was to increase real-time information and dissemination of accidents and criminal activity. Uh, we have been able to do so, and I'll show you a couple of um, examples here, and that just helps uh, the community to stay informed. Our next goal was to provide the citizens with safety tips and request tips from citizens. Uh, we've done that. Uh, we've had, had some crimes that have been solved with tips from people that saw the information that we posted online, or more importantly, they shared the information, like I said, with that secondary audience, and that secondary audience knew something about it, and, and then they called in. Uh, and lastly, uh, our, next, our last goal was to provide community outreach by highlighting events, activities, and other agency accomplishments. This is the feel-good stuff, the public relations, the, the community outreach. It is a good thing to showcase the positives of your agency. And in this time and age in which it, it all seems like everything's negative about police, uh, this is, to me, this is a very invaluable resource in which you can showcase all the good things uh, that you're doing out there for the community. And, uh, and trust me, the citizens love this. Uh, majority of people just love seeing these things and they'll post comments, etc. So your content, once again, has to be in alignment with your goals. Uh, the first here is a screenshot of how we use social media uh, requesting for assistance in solving a crime. Basically, we had a crime, we have some suspect information, we have photos or we have videos, we posted it. Uh, as you can see, uh, we put some you know, information we also put the number to call and just sit and wait and the phone should ring. Uh, and it did for us and we were able to, to solve uh, crime. The next is an example of um, community outreach. We have a big 4th of July celebration every year here in Crowley. And every year we just put out little reminders uh, to people about, uh, you know, fireworks are illegal in the city or there's going to be a traffic uh, pattern change, et cetera. Uh, and once again, that's an inv that's invaluable tool for, 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 uh, for the citizens because they can get that information kind of real time, if you will. Uh, the next is an example of real time information that we send out. This is an example of we, we had a wreck, uh, it was blocking an intersection and we were actively working it. We went ahead and we posted it in there. Like I said, a lot of people check their Facebook all the time. 
So uh, this was a great tool uh, to just keep people informed. Will it stop people from driving by? No, but it does put out the information um, to the community. The next thing, uh, platforms. Uh, and this is once again when you need to decide which platform is going to work best for your agency and for your community. In Crowley, we have two platforms, um, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, let's start with Facebook, which is it is our platform of choice. Um, right now, we have about 1,636 followers, active followers, which account for about 11% of our population. Uh, when we started this, uh, not, not even a year ago, uh, we only have about 200 followers. But the followers is not the main thing, it's the people that actually share with the followers. We've had posts in which they have been shared or reposted, et cetera, in the hundreds and thousands. So once again, um, the power of this is exponential. Once it gets out and people start sharing with their friends, it can be you may have an incident in Texas and people in Alaska or Hawaii or Maine or Florida or any, you know, any of the corners of the country, or even overseas, they may be uh, uh, knowing about this. Twitter, unfortunately, Twitter has not been too successful for us. Uh, found out the other day we only used it six times in three years. Uh, that is that's very, very poor. Uh, so what are we, how are we going to fix this is we're going to link Facebook and Twitter, which you can. So every time we post uh, on Facebook, it also go out on Twitter. So basically, we'll have a twofold um, platform, if you will, going out. And then, what I consider perhaps to me, once again, the most important thing is your policy development. I would not recommend anybody going ahead with a social media program without a comprehensive program, um, comprehensive policy addressing certain things. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about here, I'm going to use my current policy as an example. Once again, uh, you can do whatever you want with your policy and tailor it to your something that fits your organization and fits your community. By the way, my policy is public. If anybody wants to, to get a hold of my policy, uh, I'll, I'm glad to share it. And my information, my contact information will be at the end of the webinar. Uh, but when you talk about policies, there's certain things you need to make sure. First of all, make sure that your policy covers all your employees. And I mean sworn, I mean civilians or non-sworn, and I mean any kind of volunteers and reserves. Anybody and everybody that's going to have an access to a computer at work uh, needs to be included in your social media policy. You should need to make sure that you prohibit certain postings depicting department property and other activities. Well, I can't do that. That's against you know, free speech. No, actually, you can't. Uh, remember that this is your department. These are your things. These are your patches, your badges, your cars, your buildings, your uniforms. And you can tell people what to do when it comes to showing them online or uh, using them in social media, even in their personal pages. Uh, and lastly, you can ensure that the utilization of social networking sites and blogs and Twitter or other mediums uh, it's not done during work time unless it's for official duties. And I don't know about you, but uh, there's a lot of people that spend a lot of time uh, on their personal social media pages at work, and well, that's that's time that's not being uh, productive. And I'm not talking only about office personnel. I'm talking about your officers on the street with the smartphones or their iPads or tablets. They actually spend some time on their personal social media as well. So to bear in mind that that's something you need to consider. Uh, you need to prohibit posting certain confidential and sensitive information. Usually the rule of thumb is if it cannot be released under a freedom of information request or an open records request, it cannot and it should not be released on social media, either by an employee or by the agency. Once again, if it's not releasable under the law, then I would strongly suggest against doing that because it will put you in a legal bind probably. Uh, you need to advise your employees that an appropriate level of professionalism, professionalism should be followed anytime they're either in your social media official page or in their personal page and they are associating themselves with the organization 
any kind of negative, illegal, or unprofessional uh, activity that can be traced back to your agency can bring discredit to your organization, and your, your employees can be and should be subject to disciplinary action if that's the case. Uh, finally, social media websites of new applicants and potential recruits should be a screen. I don't know how many of you do this. Uh, what we do is every time we have a new applicant or a potential recruit, um, we have the investigator, the background investigator. We, we call them in. Now uh, we call the, the, the recruit in and have them show us their social media uh, websites. We ask them to log into them so we can review them. We never, ever, ever, ever ask for the password. We don't want to go that far, but we do ask them to, hey, let me look at your uh, social media. You'd be surprised what you'll find. If they're not willing to do that, then I'll be cautious about hiring these people because they might be trying to hide something. And remember, not all Facebook pages are public, and not everything you see in a Facebook page is the actual content of their page. So that's why we actually require them to to actually um, go into their uh, site. All right. Uh, you need to bear in mind that when you're conducting your admin investigations, your internal affairs, your, your professional standards, employees may be ordered to provide the agency with access to their social networking sites uh, when the subject of the investigation is. And once again, these are very specific, tailored situations. And the source of this is, once again, is ICP. Uh, um, it was an article written by, by uh, legal counsel, and if you're going to require someone to show them, to show you their personal uh, social media sites during an internal investigation, you got to ensure that first and for first and foremost, it is directly, narrowly, and specifically related to an employee's performance or ability to perform his or her function within the operation, or that the subject in the investigation is potentially adverse to the operation morale and efficiency of your agency. Once again, if you don't meet these requirements, uh, do not do it. You're going to be in uh, potential uh, legal trouble. So what do you include in your policy? Basically, a policy statement, a purpose statement, and some definitions are always good to have. Uh, you need to kind of like do a preamble of why you're doing this and who this, is cover, this covers, and, it, and I'll give all the definitions. Uh, you need to have some policy sections that detail your department's functional social media, the rules for approved employee postings, explaining the purpose of the department's sponsored social media use in covert uh, investigation, on covert investigation, I'm sorry. Um, usually these need, covert uh, investigations need to be approved by the chief of police or someone with authority. Um, you also need to detail uh, policies on the personal use of social media and how you monitor uh, employee social media. A good practice is to uh, get your supervisors and management managers to randomly monitor your employees' public social media. When I say public, is if you can Google it and it pops up on the computer, that's public. You don't need permission to do that. You don't need anything. So if it's in the public, you can you can you can scan scan it, make sure that they're not posting something negative or something that's going to come back and, and bite you as an agency. Um, also, please remember that you never want to post information related to any police tactical response without official approval. This is for obvious officer safety. Uh, you don't want to disseminate any information that should not be disseminated by law. We already covered this. Uh, you may or you can prohibit the display of any logo, uniform, patch, or badge because, like I say, you own them and you can do so legally. And you need to specify that when uh, when employees may exercise their free speech on their personal sites. And once again, we don't want to uh, release any kind of personal information on any officer, especially undercover officers. Um, nowadays, with this, all this uh, targeting of law enforcement officers, we, we don't want to put any identifying information out there that, that could put the officer, the employee, or their families at, at risk. Uh, once again, obscene, sexually explicit, or inflammatory speech is a no-no. Um, and very important, your people need to understand that, especially your sworn officers that go to testify in court, if there's something negative in their social media, personal social media websites, defense attorneys will have a field day in court if they can bring that and discredit your employees. So 
So they need to be aware that they're opening themselves to, to, to that, as well as potential civil litigation for disclosing information that they shouldn't be disclosing. And finally, you need to remind them that they have no expectation of privacy when they're in the public domain. So just because you know uh, it's out there doesn't mean it's private. Once again, if I can see it, anybody can. The last thing about your policy, you must include some kind of disciplinary action uh, statute, if you will, because to us, for example, uh, violations of this are, are, are some, you know, the majority of them are serious enough that they will result in some type of disciplinary sanction. So going to, um, towards the future, uh, you need to know a couple of things. First of all, social media will continue to evolve. We see it every day. There's platforms they come and go, and it's not going away, guys. It, it, it's, it's something that is here to stay, and it's just going to get bigger and, and more uh, far-reaching, if you will. Having said that, you need to stay on top of those platforms. Uh, do your research. There are actually websites you can go that actually keep you updated on what's out there, what's new, what's obsolete, what's coming up, etc. cetera. Uh, once again, social media does have a solid future. Uh, I don't think it's going to go away. If anything, it's going to become the mainstream media in a few years. Uh, so having said that, you need to continually, continuously educate yourself about social media, ask questions, ask the expert, experts. If you have money, hire someone that can come and, and, and teach you about it, etc. Because like I said, this is something that is, it's now more, more than emergent. I think it's here to stay. And always think socially. You're in a community. Uh, and always uh, think about what the community needs and wants from your department uh, in terms of social media. Uh, thank, thank you, Chief Soler. Um, before we take any questions from the audience, um, I'd like to give a few minutes to my colleague, Ben Gorbin, to talk about the uh, IACP Center for Social Media. So I'll let him uh, briefly, briefly speak on that. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you for participating. And Chief Soler, um, Great presentation. Just wanted to touch on a couple of the things that he said that um, the Center for Social Media as a whole has has seen nationwide and worldwide. Um, to the Chief's point that um, social media has a solid future. If you think back to April um, 2013 during the Boston Marathon bombing and then um, subsequent man manhunt for the two suspects, um, not only were the two brothers identified after um, the FBI and state and local law enforcement up in the Boston area decided to release um, the videos on social media, but if you look at, if you look back to that time period, you also see CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, you pick your media outlet actually using the Boston Police Department's Twitter account to confirm when Jokar Sarnayev was, un, was actually arrested because earlier that day they had actually um, announced that he was arrested beforehand and the Boston Police Department tweeted that that was incorrect. So the media even in, in your jurisdictions will come to your Facebook page, your Twitter account, your any of your social media accounts to get news about you um, and when there's a lack of that information, they may report the wrong information. Um, Chief Soler also mentioned to, to at least post once a day if you could. Um, if nothing else, post about traffic incidents, post about crashes, road closures. Um, traffic affects most of the people in your community. Um, I know, uh, just a quick example, my dad never um, followed anybody on Facebook. Um, I called him one day because I follow my hometown police department in New Jersey, even though I live in Alexandria, um, and said, hey, dad, don't take this road home. There was a big crash. Um, he didn't believe me. Two and a half hours later, when he got home from his 15-minute drive from work, he called me and said, how did you know that? My hometown police department posted it on Facebook. Um, so there really are some some simple strategy things. Um, if you look at the screen now, that's a screenshot of what our um, Center for Social Media homepage looks like now. Everything that Chief Soler covered is in that first getting started tab. Um, we do also have the, the resources that he showed earlier in the PowerPoint. 
um, under that resources tab. It also has some case law um, that, that highlights some of the things that Chief Solaire mentioned, including the fact that you can restrict the use of pictures, posts, anything identifying yourself as a police officer or law enforcement officer, even on a personal account, um, and that you can require people to log in via their personal account during um, investigations. Um, another thing, while we talk about LinkedIn as a professional network, it's also a good strategy um, consideration to not treat LinkedIn differently than any other social media site. While we want to believe it's a professional network, um, there's nothing to stop somebody that has something against law enforcement from creating their own um, quote unquote company and calling themselves the CEO of a security company and then reaching out to your officers. Um, so that's just some of the things that are on our Center for Social Media website. Um, again, here are some of the, the things that we have. Um, Chief Solaire showed some of the, a, a list of some of the 24 case studies um, talked about some of the information from our 2014 annual social media survey. We're actually in the process of doing a 2015 one um, that will be released at our conference in Chicago. It will also go up on our website um, as soon as it's released in Chicago. Um, and I encourage you to check, um, check that website. Uh, we do keep it updated. We put news um, specifically related to law enforcement use of social media. Um, and we, you know, any assistance that we can provide to you, whether it be um, virtual technical assistance or, or whether it be coming out and, and giving you training or hooking you up with a mentor um, or one of our subject matter experts along with Chief Solaire um, in the field, We'd be more than happy to do that. Um, and with that, we'll open it up for questions. I, um, take a moment to go to the next slide, and I want to go ahead and provide uh, Chief Solaire's contact information. Um, we can. There you go. Um, so if, if if you do need to contact Chief Solaire or uh, any of us here at the Legacy staff, we can certainly. Um, get you the information that he talked about and put you in contact with with Ben. Um, but certainly want to give the opportunity, should anybody have any questions, um, uh, to ask Chief Solaire. You're still on the line, right, Chief Solaire? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, just anything? A few moments. Um, I nothing's come through. So, uh, Chief Solaire, I don't know if you have any other uh, follow up follow up remarks to what Ben added, but um, certainly. Um, uh, no, I I agree. Uh, once again, I think this is a very powerful tool uh, for law enforcement in these day and age. And I think once again, we've got to be careful though not to rely heavily on that because it's just another uh, tool in the toolbox and and nothing really sometimes uh, replaces the face-to-face -face interaction that we that we you know want to have with our community policing uh, uh, outreach, if you will. So, but having said that, uh, you'll be surprised how many people will follow you, how many people will will forward this information to other uh, jurisdictions, if you will, and how you will actually find people helping you solve crimes and things like that. Uh, Going back, I think uh, I wish I had implemented something earlier uh, because we're very, very successful. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go about without it today. Uh, I think uh, once again, it's, it's, it's not emergent anymore. It's here to stay, and we just gotta, we just gotta uh, deal with it, if you will. But we gotta deal with it in a responsible way. Make sure you have effective policies. Once again, my policies are available for anybody. Uh, you can email me any questions you have after the fact. I'll be more than happy to um, to answer them. And once again, thanks for being here. Uh, and oh, Chief Solaire, uh, looked like we did have a, a question. Um, okay. If, um, 
We have a question from Mark. Uh, are you concerned with people reporting crimes or other timely information between checking the page? I'm not sure I understand the, the question. Uh, am I concerned about what again? Uh, he asks if you are concerned with people reporting crimes or other timely information between checking the page. So I guess sort of the, that sort of the delay, that lag time, and uh, I guess when a, when a crime does occur um, and, you know, how much time can, can lapse um, between what goes up on the page. Is that? Well, once again, um, just like the media in the good old days, they would put information up. Uh, nothing prevents people from putting things in social media. Our responsibility as an agency is to make sure to monitor what's being put in the social media uh, and make sure that it's accurate information. Uh, sometimes things go out on social media before they hit 911. Uh, that's why you need to probably have someone monitor social media because you may actually uh, gain knowledge of a, of a crime occurring or an accident occurring in your jurisdiction through social media before they even call 911. Uh, once again, these are things, uh, sometimes you can control these things, sometimes you can't. Uh, I think everything boils down to if you're going to have these things, you cannot let them unattended. Uh, you have to monitor them and you got to make sure that everything is accurate. And if it's not, then you need to make sure it's accurate. And I don't know if that's what's the question itself or did I answer the question, but uh, I think that's the experience we've had uh, with social media. I think that's the experience that a lot of agencies have had with social media is that sometimes there's misinformation out there or there's information that goes out before we even know about it. Um, exactly. Okay. Um, just to follow up, uh, Chief, um, Mark asked if you would recommend dispatchers monitoring monitoring in real time. Uh, ideally, the best way to do this is to have, yes, someone monitoring in real time all the time. But once again, this is going to boil down to your manpower, your staffing, your resources. Uh, a lot of agencies are, are you know, what is it, 80%, 85% of the agencies in the United States are small uh, with less than 10 uh, people. If you have, if you can afford to have someone monitor all the time, you'll absolutely. But if not, then you have to make an effort to, like I said, at least monitor at least twice a day if, if you can. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a problem with uh, dispatchers monitoring because, you know, uh, once again, that's the best option is to have someone, you know, uh, looking at this the most uh, time possible. And we did have one more question um, and before we close it out because unfortunately this does shut off at, at the, right at the top of the hour but has your experience been positive in regards to the relationship between the public and the department since the implement implementation of uh, your social policy and that comes from Darren? Yes, uh, absolutely. I think it has been very positive. I think once again people want to be a uh, part of what you do in the community especially in a small community and a smaller agency. Uh, I don't know about big agencies, but I know in the, in the smaller communities, uh, people identify themselves with, with, the, with the police department, if you will, and we have had more kudos and compliments than complaints. And like I said, it's very satisfying and very rewarding when you see someone you know, put a negative general remark about police and then your own community counter that by posting, you know, you're out of line or that's not our police department or or you know, or confronting them, we don't have, we don't even have to do anything. They they police themselves. So to me, that is so rewarding to see that. That I think yes, our experience has been nothing but positive. Okay, well, uh, thank you again, Chief Solaire, and that is actually going to wrap up our webinar for the day. If you do have any questions, I, I hope you were able to get his contact information down. Um, but if you do, you didn't, then please feel free to call us here at the ICP at the uh, one eight hundred listed below. So thank you again to everyone.